Hey yo, what's good? It's your boy Dino, and we back with another video for the crazy clips from all over the world. Let's hop right into it. You know what demons look like? <laughs> yo. See that ball back there? When I walked in, he was acting crazy. Tell me, oh, past him. So I'm like, yo, man. Next time you come in, like, yo, why you? He treat me crazy. And then his wife came in and was like, yo, your wife ain't. I'm like, yo, come treat me on like that boy right there, that boy. And this girl right there, come treat me on that boy. I ain't playing that, you know what I'm saying? I hate stuff like that. They call me. Uh -huh. so now. now he sits down. He messed up. He ain't never gonna look at them the same again. Cause I gave him a spirit, I mean perspective. <laughs> you call it perspective. The real word is spirit. That's called a transfer of spirits. <laughs> Yes, sir. Oh my gosh, look at it come. What'd you just say? <laughs> That's crazy. See it? The lightning? I ain't scared of lightning, I'm scared of tornadoes. <laughs> oh my gosh. What the heck? That came by so fast. <laughs> the birds are flying away. Not a good sign. <gasps> I can hear it. Wait, that smoke. What is that right there in front of us? So that's not smoke. That's that's wind. Yep. They're you stay stay inside. Yeah, that's wind. That's oh. That's, oh shit. Yeah, that was super cool looking. <laughs> I started investing in building a team in Macedonia, which is again where I'm from. So in that small town of 5,000 people, I started hiring people there for two reasons. One, unemployment rate in that country is like 50%. No one's really working. Average wage for those who do work at the time was about $200 per month. Very, very limited opportunities. However, in terms of culturally, education is instilled in every human. Hard work is instilled in every person. I felt like there was an opportunity for me to onboard some really great team members early days and pay them really well double the national average, but that would cost me a lot less than having to hire people in the New York or anywhere in the US really. So we very quickly started building out that team. Today we have about 650 people in Macedonia. We're one of the largest employers in the country. That would not have happened if capital wasn't a constraint. I mean, we went as far as like creating schools, like English courses, because we ran out of people who spoke English. Like we couldn't hire people who spoke English because we hired them all. We started creating English courses. If someone passed the course and they got a certificate, they would then be qualified to work at Slice. Sorry, how do you create an English course? Like you go online and record videos teaching English? Physical schools, like, so went to the city, like there's English teachers at the actual schools in Macedonia who teach the English language. And I hired them, at the time it was called mypizza.com, to become teachers at our company. And they were holding courses, it was like a classroom. And so people had to show up every day. It was free, anyone can join, anyone can go and learn English. You didn't have to work at My Pizza after, but if you learned and you were proficient and you were excelling in that course, then you would immediately graduate to a job at My Pizza. Mm, that's interesting. Outsourcing to other countries. Shut that gate, man. Like, pull up and let them know. I didn't know this, but BlackRock is on TikTok. The page is littered with day in the lives of their employees and videos explaining financial topics. But what I find it most interesting is all of their comments are turned off. Every single video. 
The creator has turned off comments. And my question is why? Why, BlackRock? $10 trillion and you can't turn on your... Why is that? Now, hmm? Turn, turn on the comments, BlackRock! And turn on the comments, BlackRock. I am witnessing a glitch in the fucking matrix, and I swear to God, if this squirrel has come back out, I'm gonna have a panic attack because if you see his nose, I'm not going crazy. Oh my God! Wait, stop it. There's nothing there. There's not a grade there. There's not a fucking grade there. Where did this bitch just come from? What the fuck? He just came out of nothing. Motherfucking shit, right now. Oh, okay. I think the sky just broke. What the out. fuck happened with the sky? It broke. Why is New Mexico this fucking obvious on our weather? You got me. You gotta have <laughs> a sunny day or a fucking cloudy day. <laughs> but why? Why is it obvious? You know, what the fuck is going on, bro? This is weird. Or any weird, unexplainable stuff in my house. But I bought a guitar the other week at a garage sale from this old lady down the street. And every time I pick it up or strum it or play it, really weird shit happens. And I'll show you. It's some Lotus, like very 80s looking guitar. And every time I strum, like that, shit like that happens. Every time I mess with this thing. Like that. Bro, get rid of that guitar. I wouldn't be keeping that. Uh-uh. Consequences that are apocalyptic. Here he is in his own words. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Didn't work out. <laughs> the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. Usually it'll be something, some new technology. He really did. He, he did say, you guys don't want it. Trust me, you don't want it. What is I'm that? taking a video. All right, you ready? What the hell? Look. Yeah, I, I see it. I have no clue. What the actual f is that? Look, it's dead ahead. Yeah. It was over there in the field. I don't know if we need to go any further or not now. <laughs> I'm joking about making contact. <laughs> I told you I found another identified object. I can't believe they'd be here at least. <laughs> That's ridiculous, man. I was over there in the field. This is a prime example of geoengineer clouds. If you ever see clouds that look like this, just know that these are fake clouds. These look like a Wi-Fi signal, and that's how you will know that these clouds were created by a machine. Mm -hmm. Geoengineered clouds. These are not real clouds. These aren't even chemtrails. Chemtrails are smaller than this. These are big. These clouds were made by a machine. They're fake. Yeah, they are uh, definitely fake clouds, and they definitely do look like the uh, symbol for Wi-Fi. Nah, bro, I don't think I'd be getting in that. That doesn't look safe at all, man. <laughs> what the hell was that? 
So believe it or not, this isn't CGI. This is Tesla's Gen 2 Optimus robot, and it's like real-life science fiction. Yesterday, Tesla uploaded this new video showing off the robot's improvements, featuring Tesla-designed actuators and sensors, allowing for faster and more capable hands, a 30% wow, walk look speed at that boost, thing. a 2DOF articulated neck, and much more. They've also shed some weight, which I would assume will help when it comes to battery life. They've improved the robot's ability to balance and get around, but for me... It's the way that it's now using its hands with tactile sensing on all of its fingers and its ability to sense and handle even the most delicate of objects, as seen here with the egg. The AI is real. Now, according to Tesla, the plan is to create a general purpose autonomous humanoid robot capable of performing unsafe, repetitive or boring tasks. I think it's safe to assume that Tesla will be testing Optimus extensively on the Tesla assembly lines. And as exciting as I think this technology is, I'd be lying if I didn't say it was a little scary, too especially when you consider the rate at which this thing's improving. Bro, yeah, it's hella terrifying. Like, they, they got those things doing all kinds of crazy stuff now. From quantum computers to brain implants, there's a lot of companies pushing forward in areas that have previously been the stuff of science fiction. Here's the top what the future tech trends will be keeping an eye on in 2024. It's no surprise we're kicking off with a technology that could revolutionize the very act of computing itself quantum computers. Mm -hmm. Another trend to watch is a diverse array of new electric vehicles covering land, air, and sea. In 2024, I'll be looking forward to hopefully test drive the Aptera solar car, which I got to ride in last year, more details on Zapata's recently announced air scooter, and a new boat in development from ARC, to name a few. Last, but certainly not least, we're watching the brain-computer interface space. Neuralink recently announced recruitment for its clinical trials in September of 2023. BlackRock Neurotech, another leading company in this space, is preparing its Move Again system for a commercial launch as a medical device. Wild information right there. Yeah, Neuralink's doing some crazy things too. They finally got one in people. They reopened more clinical trials and testing. People will call them alien, but they're not. I don't look at this and think ET. I look at these as displacement craft that are coming from parallel realities. Interdimensional. That can literally move interdimensional. And he said interdimensional. They're quasi projected from higher dimensional space. Yeah, this so could be something that is that is extra or hyperdimensional. We're telling the entire world that there is something other than human life forms. See, there's that word interdimensional comes up everywhere now pay attention because they're saying they're between dimensions they can move from dimension to dimension lower and higher planes come on y'all breaking news at the white house smells like shit in here did somebody step in some dog poopy um joe I think you might have shit your pants. You should probably check your pants for a shit. Shit my pants? No, I didn't shit in my pants. I did do a big pee pee. What? Though. Oh, Joe. <laughs> Everybody in the room can smell it. You definitely shit your pants. Don't worry, Joey. I'll help you change your diaper real quick because I love you, baby. Holy shit, Donald. You shit your pants, too. It's seeping out of your pants. Why don't we all just get naked? Let's all get naked and hang out. That actually sounds fun. If you want, I can invite Michelle over here and she can show you. Her pecker? I bet that <laughs> dong is beyond powerful. No. <laughs> she can show you her new dance moves. What the fuck, Joe? You pinky promise. I bet it's you huge. Pinky a big, huge one. A big, huge, giant pecker. The peckiest pecker of them all. It's impressive, like a baby's entire arm. Okay. Stop. She does not have a pecker. What did I just look at? I, I what? Uh... I had to get up out of my bed for this one. Okay. I'm not even gonna talk. Roll the footage. Oh, now that is wild. Look at that. <laughs> Just turn the sky off and pull the curtain over. That is wild. 
told y'all well, you it's think? a realm. It's not a planet. It's a realm. I've been said it's a realm, but that don't mean it, ha it don't have a firm. what a realm is. I've been doing some research on these that three was crazy fans looking. who froze to death. And boy, is this story a little bit fishy. Cops are claiming that there is 100% no foul play that went on in the death of these three individuals. But all three of these guys' families don't believe that. They, they do not agree, and they think there was foul play. This happened on January 9th. The Chiefs were playing the Chargers in the last week of the NFL regular season. And four guys went over to their friend's house. That night, three of them froze to death. But this was not found out until two days later when one of these fans' fiancés went to this guy's house, broke in, and went to the backyard and found the three men frozen to death. You may be thinking, oh, the homeowner must have left town or something. No, he was there the whole time and throughout this time when people were trying to call him to get in contact with him uh apparently his lawyer has said that the man was asleep on the couch for two days while his friends loved ones frantically tried to contact him he said he had noise canceling headphones on and a loud fan first of all what grown man sleeps for two days straight that doesn't add up when the bodies were discovered quote unquote, asleep on the couch next to a loud fan wearing noise canceling headphones and unaware of the flurry of calls and messages from loved ones trying to locate the missing man. The what? Now, as you can see below me, the case is 100% not being investigated as a homicide, Kansas City Police told Fox News Digital. However, parents of those that unfortunately passed away are saying that they were drugged and then dragged outside by the scientist pal, the guy mm. who lives in this house as a scientist, I guess. One of the other parents is saying that the fans, quote unquote, saw something they shouldn't have before their death. And then the third family today, uh, the brother said that his brother was found in the backyard in an unusual position, frozen to death, which I, I, I don't know. Now the person that lives in this house uh, apparently had to move out of the house because of threats against him. His lawyer has also said that he's become depressed with the accusations that he is behind the deaths of his three friends. Kansas City Police is still waiting on the toxicology reports of the three fans who unfortunately passed away. A neighbor of the person that lives in the house took a video of the night that the bodies were found, that uh, the police were there, and they did cuff the owner of the house. They put him in handcuffs and they detained him, but they eventually um, took the handcuffs off and let him stay. They did not arrest him, which is very, I, I, I don't know. I, just very weird. This whole, I mean, it could be as simple as just an overdose or this could go, I just, I mean, if I was a family member, I would like to know a little bit more too. I don't blame them. Yeah, that whole situation is really weird. I'm not sure what to think about it, but, you know, it's it's just weird. Definitely don't know why they let him back out of handcuffs, because something ain't right there. Can I get your assessment of the health of American democracy right now? Well, it's pretty a little scary because we have populism, which you would expect, but it's come in a form where the ability to accept election results is really up in the air. And some of the norms about you know, what the government does and how it works. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a big election that'll take place in November. Hmm. I, I don't know that I like the way he worded that. Y'all see this? Look at 20 and 2024. I hope we are not time looping back to 2020. Because if we do, guess what? It's going to be COVID part two in March. Stay safe. Mm -mm -mm. Look at all that right there.
Shots fired at Mount Eden and Jerome Avenue Ford train station. Man, y'all got some crazy stuff going on in New York all the time, especially recently. I don't know. Sydney is at risk of becoming a city without grandchildren. That's the dire warning from experts tonight as the housing crisis forces young families and workers to leave in droves. And it's worse for those who can't afford to leave. Lachlan Bennett's from Concord, but city rents drove him up the New England highway to live and work in Tamworth. Oh, definitely affordability with, with housing. I do miss, obviously, the lifestyle you get in Sydney. Oh, no, I like the lifestyle here. Part of a growing exodus. In the long run, Sydney may well be known as the city with no grandchildren. For every one person aged 30 to 40 coming to Sydney, two are leaving. Over five years, more than 70,000 have left, most going to regional New South Wales, followed by Queensland, Victoria. The ones that we're relying on to work in our hospitals, teach our kids, and if they're not being able to find a place to live and work and join a community in Sydney, then we've got no future. As the state government pushes its plan for greater density, the report says heritage restrictions are restricting new housing. We need to protect the gems, but let's look at these heritage areas to see are there parts of these big swathes which could be redeveloped. But for a growing number of people, the issue is having no home at all. The latest data confirms homelessness is on the rise and it's happening right across Sydney. The biggest increase in people needing homelessness help in the inner west, followed by Canterbury Bankstown, Penrith, the city of Sydney, Parramatta and Campbelltown. On average, rents are increasing by $70 a week and that's really putting families beyond the brink. Wow, Australia is dealing with homelessness and rising rent prices that's crazy it seems like it's just everywhere my message и здесь у меня просто очевидная вещь ну не сдавайтесь не надо нельзя сдаваться если это произошло это означает что мы необыкновенно сильны в этот момент раз они решили меня убить но и нужно использовать эту силу не сдаваться Помните о том, что мы огромная сила, которая находится под гнетом вот этих вот чуваков плохих, лишь потому что ну, мы не можем осознать, насколько действительно мы сильны. Все, что нужно для торжества зла, это бездействие добрых людей. Mm. That's the dude that just recently died over there, they said he did. Uh, not saying anything else, if we could bring back in uh, Ms. Willis. Actually, Your Honor, the state um, has no further questions for Ms. Willis, so. All right. No need to recall. Okay, Ms. Merchant, next witness. A surprising development at the outset this Friday morning well, in this hearing in Fulton County, Georgia. Fonnie Willis, the district attorney who was on the stand testifying yesterday, and it was explosive. We all thought she was going to get back on that stand again this morning, but the DA's office said they have no more questions for her, and the defense attorneys who had been going after her all day yesterday said they too were done with her. So what we saw from Fonnie Willis yesterday appears to have been it. Now, they're talking about who they will call next. One of the issues is some of the witnesses they want to call next aren't there. I think because everyone was expecting there to be more time spent with Fonnie Willis this morning. At this point, they're having discussions, uh, procedural discussions. That's crazy, too. Man, it's just so much crazy going on in the world. All this stump, all this stuff with Trump everywhere. Just wild. So it looks like Egypt is building a buffer zone inside the Sinai Desert. And I know I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. This has always been the plan from day one. And we know this because Israel literally wrote it down for us. There's a leaked document just a couple weeks after October 7th, and they literally lay out step by step what their plan was to ethnically cleanse Gaza. First, bomb the north, then have a ground invasion, then move your way down to the south, bomb the south, push people towards Rafah, and then finally set up a buffer zone inside the northern Sinai Desert, and then force the Palestinians into that buffer zone. We've literally been watching this play out in real time 
time exactly to the script for 120 days. And you know this, and I know this, but once Palestinians go into that buffer zone, there is no coming back. Gaza is closed forever. Israel's already making plans for what they're going to do with Gaza. Afterwards, they held a conference where they were planning out settlements on top of existing cities. There's real estate agencies advertising beachfront properties. And they also just recently approved some new gas exploration licenses off of the coast of Gaza. So it's just painfully obvious. This has always been about ethnic cleansing. This has always been about taking more land. And as much as Biden calls Netanyahu an asshole or just says he's a bad guy or whatever, it doesn't change the fact that we're still actively funding this genocide. The Senate literally just passed a $90 billion military aid bill. So while people here can't afford food on the table, they can't even afford a roof over their heads, we're sending billions of dollars to foreign countries to fund ongoing genocide and to fund an imperialist regime. This is 2024 and we're literally witnessing in real time what happened in 1948 all over again. So yeah, all eyes on Rafa. It's time to get loud. It's time to get organized. Go out to a local protest. Do at least one thing today in support of a free Palestine. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about the buffer zone and this whole free Palestine movement and everything? That is, that's awesome. That's the new Sora AI and the video that it can create from text prompts. Like, <laughs> wow. That you're not going to be able to tell the difference soon. News Saturday, February 17th, 2024. Everybody was worried about Tucker Carlson interviewing Putin, but CBS goes interviews. Hamas with armed guards. Watch it. Where does this all end? All this killing, all this suffering. The killing and the suffering ends when the Israelis walk out of our land. But if they decide to stay, we shall continue to fight. And if I die, somebody else will take my place. That looks legit. Also in the news, Biden in his administration is saying that Congress is a downfall on the last Ukraine defeat. I'm sorry Biden has played as a fool. Fucking election years. Pardon my language. We do have our own problems here. I'm sorry for cussing earlier, but we have inflation, immigration, interest rates, taxes, and segregation. But yeah, lost the war in Ukraine because it's Congress's fault. You legit can take my taxes and stick it up Joe Biden's ass. This war is not even part of the U.S. war. Just let it go, Joe. Mm, I agree. Just let it go, Joe. Breaking news out of New York. Another one bites the dust. Remington leaves New York for a red state. Yep, this is just the start. Guys, I have been scouring the internet the past 36 hours, and I'm telling you, this is real. There are big, big time companies in New York that are literally closing their doors as of right now, canceling their leases in New York and finding new places to start their businesses outside of the New York area. I know, as of right now, I know of seven huge companies. This makes eight now that you can check it out. Go look it up for yourself. They have locked their doors in New York and will no longer open their companies back up in New York. They will not 
open back up until they move their companies out of New York. Told you guys, start messing around with stuff. This is going to happen. Stay safe, America. <laughs> that is wild. New York, New York, New York. There is another spy balloon confirmed in America and the government is just sending planes to watch it and they have not yet taken it out of the sky. This is 2023 all over again. If you guys remember early in February of last year, we found Chinese spy balloons all over America and the government took that one down above South Carolina. Well, now today the U.S. military is investigating an unidentified high altitude balloon flying over the western part of the country. The western part of the country, more specifically, the dead center of Colorado. The statement says currently a U.S. military aircraft is tracking an unidentified high altitude balloon flying over the western part of the United States. The military aircraft spotted the balloon and determined that it is not a threat, but its origin and purpose remains unknown. The unidentified high altitude balloon is drifting eastward in the dredge stream with early reports indicated that today the balloon was over Colorado. So the mm. government has done nothing to this balloon. They didn't even know it was there until a few hours ago, but they can 100% confirm that it is not a spy balloon like this. It's just a harmless regular balloon. What do you guys think about this? Something sounds a little fishy. Mm. I don't know what to think about that. They're saying another spy balloon? Yeah. Like, we're just going to let that happen, huh? Ah. <sighs> What do we have here? An illegal immigrant from Venezuela has been arrested for the murder of UGA nursing student Lake and Riley. Let's go ahead and talk about this. 26 year old Jose Antonio has been taken into custody and is under arrest for the murder of this young lady right here whose body was found near a running trail at her university. Police investigation have concluded that he had zero ties to Lakin and he acted alone in this heinous crime. Tell me how the USG president came out making a statement saying that all their students should not be walking around campus alone and that they should be walking around in groups. What kind of fucking life is that? You can't even walk around your own damn campus and be safe anymore. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but we are going to be seeing a lot more crimes like this in the upcoming year, possibly the next few years. Whatever your stance is on the border crisis, you cannot sit there and tell me that a bunch of bad people did not enter the U.S. illegally through the southern border within the last couple years. I don't care what you say. You cannot tell me that. And now this poor girl's family has to go and bury their daughter their 22 year old daughter who they were expecting to graduate soon, live her full life, you know, get married, have kids. None of that's going to happen anymore because of this guy's decisions. All of that has been taken away from this girl. All of that joy has been taken away from her parents. All of that because of this motherfucker right here, all taken away. That's messed up, man. Nobody, nobody deserves that. We got to really do something about this. Like, we can't just have undocumented people running around everywhere. We really can't. It's just not safe. All right, so this just came out yesterday from Defense News. It says that Marines passed a full financial audit, a first for any U.S. military branch. So apparently the Marine Corps passed a full financial audit for the first time with the service announcing Friday its fiscal 2023 financial audit received an unmodified audit opinion after a rigorous two-year review. The milestone, something the Defense Department and other armed services still have not achieved, comes after almost two decades of trying to prepare the Corps' records and several failed audits along the way. During the audit, the Marine Corps had third-party auditors from Ernst & Young vet the value of all its assets listed on financial statements. The Marine Corps also had to prove that every single item existed and was accounted for, and it was where the service said it was. So apparently the audit team made more than 70 site visits in the U.S. and around the world. And in these visits, they checked more than 7,800 real property assets, such as land and buildings, 5,900 pieces of military equipment, 1.9 million pieces of non-ammunition supplies, such as spare parts, and 24 million items of ammunition, some of which are stored at Army and Navy facilities. Now, if a vehicle wasn't where it was supposed to be because it was out conducting operations or a piece of ammunition wasn't there because it was already being used due to, you know, training, they just had to show documentation for it. So 2017 was when they first started conducting these full financial statement audits. Hmm.
That's crazy. And they say that they passed the audits. I don't know. I need to see more about that. All right. So I got one more for you guys. At White House Senior Living, our residents feel right at home. Our vibrant facility offers delightful <laughs> activities and outings, round-the-clock professional care, and exquisite house-made meals. Well, I've been eating everything that's put in front of me. But I've been eating all, all Italian foods, basically. And ice cream. And ice cream. Chocolate chip ice cream. White House Senior <laughs> Living, where no residents way. feel like <laughs> residents. <laughs> No way, man. No way. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all. What? All right, all right. So that's another video for the archives. I hope you guys had a lot of fun hanging out today. I'm still caught up on the last one, man. Anyways, thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you guys for, you know, coming through every time that I post a new video. Go ahead and do me a favor. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Hit the notification bell so you get a notification every time I upload a new video like this. Yes, Dino. Okay, Dino. And I hope that you're all doing well. I hope you have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, day, whatever it might be for you. And until next time, peace.